All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, welcome back to another live stream, Maker Pipe live stream. Uh, this is our second live stream, and we're so excited to do these. Last week we had Jake, and he did a a build with mini connectors where he picked a project at random and then tried to build it live. And that was a lot of fun. And we're excited to do it again this Wednesday, right now, yeah, where we're going to do pretty much a, a build roundup and then a Q&A. So I'm really excited about this and to interact with you guys live. I see some people in the chat. Hey, Warren, good to see you. And uh, my name is Dave. I'm one of the owners here at Maker Pipe. And we've also got Jake coming back from this live stream too. We thought it'd be good to have two people on the mic. So he's gonna be on the chat and uh, responding to everybody. Yeah, hello everybody. Good to be back for another live stream. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. Excited to read your comments and uh, chat with everybody. Hey, Studio Hansen, how you doing? Good evening. Uh, can everybody hear us okay? Definitely let us know if the if the quality uh, is good and that you guys can hear us. We're so excited to to talk and and um, really what we're going to do tonight. Uh, I want to hear from you guys as much as possible. Please send us a question in the chat. What are you working on? What kind of DIY projects are you working on? Can we talk about them? Uh, if you've got any pictures go ahead and post them in the community. Our community is connect.makerpipe.com. So if you've got any photos, we'd love to see them. Post them in the community, and I'll be able to pull them up and then chat about them. Uh, I do have a bunch of builds uh, pulled up, ready to go from the community. And I think it'd be fun, too, to comment on them if you guys have some questions or anything like that. Hey, Raymond, how you doing? We're going we're gonna to look at one of your builds, too. Walnuts and wine berries. Hey, Meg and John, how you doing? Uh, great. Great to see you guys. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be pulling up builds and we do this weekly series called Maker Pipe Mondays. It's our chance to get in the community, talk about the builds, and then go over them and, and take a look. And honestly, it's my favorite part of the week uh, because I get to take a look at all the builds and all the creativity of you guys building and i'm hoping to rival that with tonight maybe this will be my favorite time um i've got my uh my bell's best brown here what are you guys drinking do you have any any beverages 219 that was an expensive one but i, I like i like brown ales that's that's my thing but uh, uh we are here and i i hope you guys are doing good um you know, if, if you can leave any comments, if you have any questions about the builds, I'd be so excited to, to definitely see that from you guys. And, um, you know, this is interesting to do it live. I mean, normally I'm just recording this in a vacuum, right? We have the community there, but I'm just there in a vacuum. So, uh, and that's, that's our favorite part of this whole thing is the community. Because we really started off as a, you know, the whole Maker Pie project with the community. Um, we did a Kickstarter that was community backed and we've really tried to incorporate that more and more. So this is super exciting for me. I'm glad to be doing this. Uh, but thanks for everybody for tuning in. Uh, and we'll, oh, someone, Studio Hansen says, love Bell's Too Hearted Ale. Uh, definitely, I, I, I just have a thing for brown ale. Walnuts and wine berries, uh, John gives me you know, some gruff sometimes that it's not an IPA, but that's all right. You like what you like, right? Um, but let's let's get right into the builds. Um, I've got a ton of them lined up, and we've had so much participation. Uh, it's We've got, a, honestly, a backlog of builds that we want to take a look at. And again, if you are working on something specific, if you've got a picture posted in the community, um, let Jake know that you did, and then we'll pull it up and talk about it because nothing would make me more excited than to field okay, <laughs> being in a vacuum sucks, says Raymond. Yeah, that's true. I've never experienced that. Uh, but yeah, nothing would make me happier than to answer some questions tonight. Um, 
So the first one we've got is by John Thompson. And this was posted in the community a little bit ago. And he, this is his second post. Um, he's got this beautiful backyard garden that originally he kind of got hurt. You know, public service announcement, be careful with conduit, right? He got a little nick, but he said he's, he's no worse for wear. Uh, but he's got this nice garden in the back there and made this trail. So we've been seeing a ton of springtime builds, a lot of trellises, a lot of enclosures, and we'll take a look at a few. Uh, but then we got an update by John. And I love the updates because it shows kind of the progression of the project. But this was garden trellis number two, 2.0. And uh, he said, luckily, no more injuries. That's great. Uh, but he changed it up a little bit with his wife. There's his wife there. And you can see the original structure, right? And uh, did a few different things with version 2.0 which I love. I think this is great. Added the the bends around the corners, which gives it a cool look. Uh, added some reinforcement as well with the 45s. And then he was saying how he also made a, a T connector here that joined the two sides. Uh, well, it, basically a four-way, right? That he used here. That's our four-way connector. And it's looking good. Uh, you can see plants are looking uh, a little bit better too. The garden's moving along. And uh, looks like a great build. So I got to say, I love to see those bins. When people incorporate bins into builds, it's one of the coolest parts. Yeah, I know. Break out the conduit bender. It's it's not too expensive. I mean, a conduit bender, uh, forty or fifty dollars, and you know it can give it that cool sweep, and it's not too difficult. Anybody can do it, really. Uh, conduit bender, you can apply a lot of leverage, and it looks really cool. I think we'll see a, a few more builds with the bend. But, John, uh, that that was some great builds. Appreciate you sharing. I'm popping into Maker Pipe Monday speak. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, We've done 50 episodes of Maker Pipe Monday. It is hard. Uh, we, we've got it hardwired. Uh, but here's, here's a build by Jane, and she shared this um, a while back, another springtime kind of privacy build. And she had this wooden fence here and wanted to extend the privacy fence up top. And uh, Raymond says, deburr your cuts. Yeah, what, what do you use to, to deburr your cuts, Raymond? I mean, we've got the, there's a few different methods, but I'd like to hear from you what you've been using. Uh, but Jane's build, she's got this privacy fence on top of her, a real fence, and it looks good. She. She's got a nice garden here, a lot of containers. It's got it all lined with landscaping cloth to prevent the weeds. But she actually built right onto the to the fence with some one hole straps, two hole straps, and then built up and created the whole fence. So that was pretty neat. I like that build. And she was saying how um, she lives in British Columbia on Vancouver Island and gets some really heavy winds. So you know that those are those fences are definitely going to be tested. And that's one thing. I mean, when, when building outdoors, the wind load or snow load or whatever the weather is, especially wind, uh, you definitely got to keep in, in mind about that. Especially with those canopies, like the catch air. Right. I mean, you're building a sail, basically. Here's one by Tim. We've got uh, this really interesting bird feeder. And also, it's a combo bird feeder, and trellis. Uh, and again, here's some more cool bends. He's got this center part, which is a, a shepherd's hook. And it looks like maybe a hummingbird feeder, something like that. And he's got this shepherd hook bend that looks cool with an eye hook in there. And he's got three different sections that come off of that with some welded wire. And uh, that actually acts as a trellis for these plants he's got coming up underneath. So, I mean, that's that's a unique thing. If you're going to go and buy that, I don't think you could find something, but that came from the mind uh, of Tim, and uh, it's really pretty cool. He was saying he made the garden trellis with the MTM Maker Pipe clamps. He radiced it, um, and he used a broomstick to drill the holes in the ground about a foot deep. 
used a broomstick oh to just tamper it down and then the whole thing's about seven feet tall so really cool build i think in that one's cool too i think he mentions uh the painting method that he did which is cool because we don't really see a lot of a lot of paint methods so that's that's true i mean we've seen that a lot this spring with outdoor builds having it kind of blend into the surrounding because conduit alone has kind of a industrial look right but if you want it to blend into the background you hardly see that and uh he does talk about that he says that um he used paint and primer in one coat and uh he said that he thinks he should sand it and galvanize the surface first um and that's something that we have been looking into actually and thinking about doing a video if you'd guys like to see that on how to paint conduit, I know our connectors, the black finish, it's E-coat, and it's what you normally put under paint, you know, in an automotive situation. So that's no problem. But if you guys would like to see how to paint that, definitely let us know. Um, Raymond says, I use a deburring blade thingy on his tubing cutter, right? Nice. It's right there. It flips out. Um, and then... Uh, Walnuts and wine, or wine berries have used a step drill or a uni bit with good results to deburr. A lot faster than doing it by hand yet with a conduit cutter. If you've got to do a lot, doing it with power tools. And I know walnuts and wine berries are no stranger to power tools when it comes to maker pipe building. Um, and they've got really cool things. I, um, I got turned on by MKE Gadgets, who is... Let me see if I can find this. There's a, a few different conduit deburr tools but he was talking about one from dewalt uh, let me see if i can go on amazon and conduit deburr tool drill let's see how this this works out um, you've got your normal your, your offenders they hand ones this one is interesting where oh here's the one that i was looking for this is by klein tools but mk gadgets was saying that um, there were some other companies but i've used this before you put this in an impact or a drill and these blades just go around deeper is the conduit really cool and it works pretty well in, until it doesn't until it breaks but you can you can buy replacement blades so that's definitely something to check out Oh, D.H. Vargas, thanks for, hey, D.H. Vargas, good to see you again. Thanks for tuning back in. He was with us last week. And he says, to, de to deburr the conduit, use the tubing cutter and don't cut all the way through. Just snap the conduit over your knee like you do a stick and you won't have the internal burr to mess with it. Yeah, that's a great tip. So um, what he's talking about is when you're using a regular tubing cutter, you can keep going and keep cutting, keep cutting until the end falls off. But an electrician's tip is to get probably half of the way through, three quarters of the way through, and then you can you can step on it or snap it over your knee, and it actually breaks off really cleanly. So that's a that's a cool tip. Try the Klein tool product line. Yeah, we got Klein there. Uh, that might be something we talk about too because uh, you definitely want to watch those burrs. I mean, they're minimal. Uh, but something you want to, excuse me, watch out for. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, Tim Tim painted his. We've got some other builds that were painted as well, but really, uh, really cool to see. I like that one. Here's one we've got by Gloria. Uh, check this out. This is a whole series of raised beds. I think this is probably probably the best picture where she's got six raised beds all in the line on the side of her house. And then she did trellises for all of them. Pretty simple trellises, just some 90 degree connectors, four posts sticking in. And then uh, she used a few different methods to support the plants. I guess those are the only pictures I've got, but uh, she, she did string hanging down. Uh, that looks good. And then these cattle panels and she mentions those specifically and i've had some customers talk to me about cattle panels have you guys ever do you know what cattle panels are anybody in the chat heard of cattle panels because it was a new one on me uh what they actually were i'm going to bring up 
Yeah, I'm not sure. I've never never seen. You said cattle panels. Cattle panels. Okay. Yeah, I've never heard of such a thing either. Oh boy, cattle panels and uh, rural king. This one is for you, uh, John. Walnuts and wine berries. They turned me on to rural king. If you don't have rural king in your area, uh, it is quite an experience. A lot of country um, equipment, supplies, a lot of great stuff, a lot of hardware and everything. Uh, but yeah, that's these are what I thought cattle panels were. Where you know it's the uh, you know it's the gates right that you see, but cattle panels. Are oh they were uh, here we go. You guys are want, gonna want to see this because it seems super useful. Check this out. It is this welded wire in big panels. So this one is uh, fifty inches by sixteen feet long for twenty four bucks. I mean, you know, that's right along what we like. It is cheap and readily available and uh, would work great. I mean, not only for trellises, but also I'm thinking about using it for uh, like surfaces. If you build a table or something like that. Yep. Raymond's heard of them. He says it's like hardware wire, but a heavier gauge. So it's stiffer. Um, that's great. And then I got a question from uh, Ken in North Carolina. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he wants to know, how does current user's paint hold up with the galvanizing? Is MakerPipe going to make recommendations for paint prep over conduit? Oh, Ken. Awesome. Thanks for the question, Ken. Really appreciate that. So, um, you know, it is, there's a lot of methods, I think, uh, that we're looking at. Uh, it's not something we do a whole lot uh, because usually we're using the shrink wrap, but we have that readily available. Um, a lot of people are thinking about painting and they ask, you know, how does paint hold up like you are? And to tell you the truth, I mean, because I haven't done it so much, uh, I don't know. I know, you know, anything when you're painting, prep is the key thing, right? Sanding, I mean, if you're really followed by the book, it'd be sand it and then prime it and then paint it and then put on more paint, you know? So, but please, even though I can't answer your question because I don't have the experience, and maybe somebody does in the in the chat, we're planning on uh, researching that, doing some tests, and releasing that information in a video. So uh, that's been a common question. And uh, Ken, thanks for that in the chat. And yeah, Raymond that. shared his method for uh, for painting. Uh, if you look up a little bit farther in the chat. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Raymond said uh, I use an automotive primer on the conduit. Uh, scuff the surface with a sandpaper first and then paint with a spray paint, ex exterior latex, whatever. I've had good results with several types. Oh, cool. That's And I got to show you while we're, since Raymond's here, let's go to, Raymond has been active in the community. Thank you, Raymond. He's built a lot of really cool things. And... Um, we've, we've got one of your hacks, uh, queued up for this weekend or this live stream, Raymond. Uh, but check this out. This is some of it, but this is the one that I wanted the project that Raymond posted initially. And, um, Raymond definitely let us know if you painted this in that way, but check this out. This is a, a cart that he made for his, uh, grandson in his son's wedding. So his grandson was going to be the ring bearer or let me see if I, I don't want to get this right. Yeah. His seven month old grandson was going to be the ring bearer and he refurbished this cart, uh, in his son for his son's wedding. So really cool story. And then that's gorgeous. I mean, what a, what a beautiful finish. And I'm, I'm guessing that Raymond, you painted those. Let us, let us know for sure what that is. But yeah, Raymond's been an active part of the community. Thanks, Raymond, for that. It's really great to to interact with you and chat uh, here as well. So yeah, I, I want to, I think cattle panels could be a real good thing. The other one, we've got tractor supply next to us. We're not as lucky to have um, 
rural king. But uh, and it is a really cool store. If you've got if you live in the Virginia Tennessee area, um, definitely check that out. But I want to look up tractor supply. Raymond said that he used an automotive primer and black Rust Oleum spray paint on that on that cart. Yeah, and it came out fantastic. So there, there's some good information right from Raymond. Yeah, here it is at Tractor Supply as well. I mean, you, you know we're all about cheap materials. I mean, conduits, exactly. It's a common material. It's inexpensive for what you get. And this, I think, is no different. You know, so a lot of different uses. Definitely cattle panels. I'm seeing in the chat things like poultry and uh, great fencing from poultry from Joshua. Hey, Joshua. Thanks for that. Good to see you. Uh, Yaw, Yaw Pancakes. Awesome stream. Thanks. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, DH Vargas mentioned the, the ki uh, price of conduit right now being a little bit higher than usual. We were just talking about that with the Kickstarter, you know, you were saying back in those days. Oh, man. Yeah. Back, back, uh, it's about four or five years now. It was $3.50 for a 10 foot length. So I feel your pain. Uh, we're paying, we're paying about $8 locally. Um, and, you know, it's always a great idea to, if you can, get 10 sticks, you get that contractor's discount, which a lot of the big box stores, are uh you know about 10 percent, so that's helping but yeah i'm looking forward to the time when prices go down i mean you know try to get any supplies uh, we were we were building uh what was it jake that we were building oh a new packaging station we were building right. a new packaging station for the shop and we just needed some plywood for the deck <laughs> and it was it's no joke i mean that is an arm and a leg so uh i hope yeah everybody that does woodworking diy i know you all are waiting for for it to come down another thing to mention with the conduit too a guy at the shop was telling me that on facebook marketplace he saw a couple of contractors that had you know trailer loads of conduit so for like really cheap so you might keep that in mind you need to try to find you know local people that, that are not using it or have a another project left over you know especially tradesmen if they're you know are tearing down a house something like that yeah and that's something that i'd love to do way more I don't know about you guys, but, you know, conduit being that it's used actually for building buildings and, um, you know, there's remnants from electricians, there's buildings that are taking it out. seems like an awesome opportunity and uh, Facebook marketplace is a good place to check out. But yeah, whoever's got the, the line, uh, the tip on some used conduit, some cheap used conduit. Um, but I don't know about you guys, but I like, I'll cut it down and down and down. And it's amazing at the end of a project or a few projects, I'm left over with like, you know, these little tiny pieces. All right, we've got a whole bucket of just, you know, just stubs and stuff that are left over, which I'm surprised, you know, a lot of projects, you can get pretty, pretty close to using it all. It's kind of surprising sometimes. Yeah, we've got a question from Sarah Lewis. Uh, do you have any builds for a clothing rack, clothes rack? That's a good question, Sarah. I, I, I think a really good example is on Instagram. If you go back on our Instagram, pretty uh, little little ways. Remember the storefront that that made that was early on. You know which ones I'm talking about? Yeah, I remember. Uh, that was a store in Montana, actually, and they were doing. They were doing clothing rack. Yeah, that's a good. That is a good, and um, they had a great store. They was kind of like a, a local Montana clothing and goods company, um, really great people, and they were outfitting their new store, which they did some clothing racks for. Let me see if I can scroll through them. And it was uh, a small town business, um, you know, just trying to make a effective way uh, an inexpensive but effective way to create these clothing racks for their store because outfitting a, a new store can definitely be expensive. Wow. A lot on Instagram, a lot of builds. Yeah, it's going to be pretty far back, but cause I think that was, was that not around the Kickstarter time or maybe a little bit after? A little bit after. Oh, here we go. Nice memory, Jake. 
yeah, here's here's some off the wall or on the wall. And they did a cool thing too. They these connectors were actually natural steel with a clear coat. Had a different look to it. Uh but yeah, this is a, a clothing rack. But if you're you know, if you're thinking about a uh Sarah, I'm not sure if you are, but like a clothing rack for a a specific room, you know, that you can move around or maybe it's not mounted on a wall, that's definitely something that we get a lot of questions about it, but I I can't really um pull one up on there. It's the only one that I, I'm aware of at the moment, but yeah. Let to see one if you build it. Right. Yeah, or get in touch with us. Let us know. Uh we'll help you build it. We love doing that. Uh Raymond Fast says don't throw away your scraps for sure. Keep whittling them down. You might need that stub piece. We've got another question from Ken. He wants to know if we're doing the dye working for the stamping and the stamping powder coating in the US. Oh, okay. Well, Ken, uh, yeah, that's an awesome question. And you know what? We do not talk about this nearly enough, but all of our connectors are made in our shop in South Carolina, and I've made the dyes uh, myself. Most all of the dyes uh, I've actually machined myself and designed myself. Uh, I've had some help here and there from friends, but yeah. Uh, so we've done all the dye work. We have, um, we've done all the dye work. We've, uh, we make everything in our shop. Uh, we get it from U.S. Steel. All of our connectors are U.S. Steel. And we, everything that happens with our connectors is within a 60 mile radius from our shop in Anderson, South Carolina. So we're super local and um, we get the steel from someone local. We then get them tumbled after we form them and punch them from someone local. And then they go to a, a powder coater or a uh, e-coater, which is like powder coating, but you dip it and then bake it. That's our, our black coating usually. And they're local too. So we just drive the van around, pick stuff up, drop stuff off, and it's it's super cool. But we are proud, to, really proud to be made in the USA. And uh, manufacturing is been something that I've been involved with for for some time before Maker Pipe, and uh, we're really proud to do that. So, thanks for the opportunity, Ken, to to talk about that. I love talking about that when I can, and you know, not a lot of people know that. So we got to do a better job talking, I guess. Is the is the silver connectors? Are they also e coded? I don't, I don't even know this. I probably should. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the silver connectors. Uh, and what Jake's talking about is we've been making black forever, but we decided to do silver. I mean, conduit silver, the connectors, uh, you know, silver seems like a good option. And let me know what you guys think in the chat, if you're into the silver or not. But yeah, there's our black connector. That's the e-coat finish that we have done, you know, 30 miles away from our from our shop. And then we added these silver connectors with a clear band instead of a black band. And that's something new. You can see we're out of stock on that because we did an initial first run. And then we were wondering that we sold, we sold them and ran out of stock. And uh, that was a good sign, but we wanted to, you know, kind of gauge the interest, but yeah. And, and it matches conduit. Great. The builds that have been uh, done with this, it has a cool, you know, uh, all one color look. So, uh, if that's something that people would like to see moving forward, we'll definitely, definitely do that more and keep that going. Uh, Randy wants to know if we can share uh, any more insight about the potential adjustable angle that we mentioned in the community a few months back. Hey, Randy, awesome question. Thank you. Uh, I feel like, Jake, are these questions, do we have ringers? <laughs> I feel like we're getting just served up these awesome questions, but yeah, Randy, um, thanks so much. What Randy's talking about, I'll bring that up, hopefully, in the community. Yeah, I shared it, so you should be able to go to my profile. and. Right, it. I remember that. I don't even want to look at how long ago that was. <laughs> and Ken said uh, he's an automation builder. Uh, let me know when you want to kick it up, Peter Bowles, et cetera. So it's cool to see. Oh, yeah. Ken, that's awesome. We We need your help. For sure, Peter Bowles and all. But yeah, this is the one that 
that Ken was referring to, uh, the adjustable connector, which is uh, one piece that grabs onto a pipe and then another piece that grabs onto a, a continuous pipe, a through pipe, and then you can tighten down this bolt to, to kind of pick your angle. And they, it's cool because it even goes uh, parallel to each other. So you can have two pipes back to back. But yeah, to answer your question, Ken. Um, Randy we, asked his question. Oh, I'm sorry, Randy. Uh, Randy, um, sorry about that. Yeah, to answer your question, Randy, we were working on it today. Uh, we had, these were our prototypes eight months ago. I hate that. Um, and we were trying to bring the dies back into focus. Uh, but yeah, we were working on it today and doing some more initial uh, prototyping and production tests. Uh, so yeah, hopefully if everything goes well, which we're really working hard, that's coming soon. And then we've got a few other connector designs that are coming soon as well. But yeah, great question. Thanks, Randy. Yeah, and I, I think that'd be really helpful. I mean, the 45s are good, but uh, that's a lot of potential there. Yeah, I like the fact that they, they tighten separately. Because I remember whenever we first talked about the design, that was something we, we thought was cool. Right. And then um, one thing that uh, I do want to mention about that that we didn't tease there was we've got uh, another connector that's part of that that is a, uh, a flange that fits on that adjustable too. So instead of going pipe to pipe, you can go pipe to a flat surface and bolt that in. So we're working on getting that too. But the first priority is just getting that, that one done. Thanks for that question. Um, yeah, Raymond said he's waiting on the adjustable angle, so he's got a project lined up. Oh, uh, nice. Pressure's on. Yeah, keep us keep us moving on it. What is that project? I'd love to know. Yeah, Raymond, let Very us cool. definitely let us know what that project is. Um, because, you know, that's a cool thing. Is like, you know, we put out the connectors, maker pipe connectors originally with no idea. I mean, just the breadth of projects and uses that you guys would come up with. It, it really is amazing. It blows my mind. And that's what I love about uh, checking these projects out. So uh, I can't even fathom the ways that you guys are going to use the adjustable. Uh, so that's, that's really exciting. We got a question from Harlan. Hey, Harlan. They want to know, has anybody made a window awning? that can tilt at desired angles. Okay. Yeah. I think, you know, there, there's been a number of, there's been a num number of awnings. And uh, one great way to do that is to run a horizontal pipe, attach it on a hinge or something that moves, and then be able to use T's and, and uh, change that out. Let me see if I can come up with a I think Kelly's is a good example the kind of the adjustable raised bed did we have that on the community uh, I don't think I've shared it yet um, you should have the folder from the other day because mm. we have an interview with him that we're gonna be releasing soon that's really cool so stay right tuned for that but we do have some of the pictures because he he emailed them to us what would be maybe if we can kind of illustrate that I can email to you if I need to. I don't, yeah, that would be good. But right if you can, we'll get back to that and show kind of an example. But um, In the meantime, Randy uh, said Marine Bim and I concept might work for that too. Oh, right on. Yeah. Randy's definitely his concept. But here's, here's kind of what I was talking about. Um, well, Jake's pulling that up. Um, you know, your, your question about uh, a window awning that can tilt at desired angles. Like, this is a great way to do it. Um, if you run a horizontal pipe all the way across and attach it to a wall and then tease, you can, you know, swivel that if you're using the right method that kind of adjusts. So maybe that's one idea. I'm not sure if it would work for, for your project, but... Um, that could be something, but we'll we'll bring up that other project. Kelly's uh, build is really cool, uh, and we did an interview with Kelly. Great guy. Uh, he made some fantastic raised bed critter protectors uh, that uh, flip up and back. 
So. Um, that folder is in Dropbox that has all, all the videos and everything. Okay, let me see if I can. Get the video would be cool to show because I think he actually shows how it moves and everything in action. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to bring that up. Um, bear with me, guys, while I bring bring this up. And again, we did. Uh, I I talked with Kelly the other day. Um, good conversation, and he. Here we go. Okay. The video. So this is this is Kelly. Check out his uh, his view right there. He lives in. Um, out near Zion National Park. But what he did is he has these whole enclosures here for his raised beds on, on a hinge. So he can lift them up and then drop them back down. And a really effective uh, sort of method to do that. So you can imagine you could do an awning like that. Uh, and the method uh, that he attached these, he's got a great picture of that. See if I can pull that up. Of course, it's not going to load. Let me pull that down. We'll keep trucking, and once I get that pulled back up, we will definitely check that out. That was really cool, too, because he was saying, you know, he was surprised with how light it was. He was able to, you know, lift it up pretty easily. Right. Okay. Here we go. I pulled it in a different place, but he he did the whole build at a half inch EMT, which made it light, and then uh, he he just used two hole straps, right, to attach to the three quarter inch conduit, and that was his hinge method. And we've been studying hinges lately, trying to figure out all kinds of good ones. We've got a video where we did eight hinge roundup, and then we heard from a lot of people about how they made a hinge with conduit and maker pipe. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we'll, we'll have more. I think we got a, a hinge idea from Raymond. Uh, let me go to that since Raymond, Raymond is in the chat. And then we've got this also one that Bill shares. But here's Raymond's hinge. Raymond, definitely let me know if I butcher this, but I'm going to try and summarize what you did. So, um, Raymond took advantage of the fact that the inside diameter of EMT conduit was pretty close to half inch galvanized black pipe um, or half inch galvanized pipe, right? So really close. And he kind of, he took that black iron pipe, you can see there, he took a layer off, kind of reduced the diameter and then created um, a, a little insert to go in the maker pipe connectors. And I like this, that the black iron pipe went into, and then there was even a tab that he created to stop it from going. And then he made this hinge out of three T connectors and some black iron pipe, super cheap. De I know you put some work into that, Raymond. I could definitely tell, um, but uh, you know, a great concept. And we've seen uh, other great hinges like this as well. So Raymond, I appreciate you making that post and talking about and adding, um, you know, your hinge idea. It's been fantastic, the community-driven ideas uh, that we're getting, and uh, we love making videos about that too. So I appreciate that, Raymond, yours, uh, and you posting all this information. If you want to get more information about what he did, uh, definitely check out his post on the community. All right. And Raymond said he's using the adjustable connector for a giant spider Halloween decoration. So, oh, nice. Well, you got some time, but hold hold us to it. We got to get that adjustable connector out for sure, and we're working on it. We were just working on that today, and we'll be tomorrow next week till we get it. Um, here's a build that we had from Josh, and Jake posted this. Uh, this was a. I love this because we did a video about a corner LED lamp that we threw together. Uh, I was really excited about that build and it came out pretty cool. It was just one 90 degree connector and uh, bought a piece, a cheap LED strip and it had a remote 
uh, that you could change the color. And then Josh, he got inspired by that and built, uh, built two of them. And then he kind of even one up the game and then put LEDs on the bottom too. And it looks really cool. That, that's a cool picture. Um, but yeah, that was a video that we did on uh, how to build an LED lamp. And it was only, you know, $20, $30 to pull this off, $35, something like that. Uh, great little build, fun thing. And I, I, I love that somebody actually, <laughs> A, watched that video, got inspired, and then, and then built it. So you can't beat that. And that was cool to see Josh's post or uh, email that. And that goes for a lot of builds. Like people will email us the build and we're so appreciative of that. And uh, they okay us to post it on the community. And I, I like doing that. And the team likes doing that so people can see. Uh, here is a another, uh, another critter enclosure. And we've seen so many of these uh, in the past couple of weeks. It is definitely critter enclosure. And she built this critter enclosure uh, for a raised bed. Um, and use the full span EMT conduit. Uh, I, I hope this, uh, that's, a, that's a long span to be unsupported. I love seeing like every five feet be supported. Uh, but hey, it's only holding a bird net up there, uh, a half inch bird netting. Uh, so it might, might work, uh, but that, that was a cool build. She, uh, she's definitely proud. That was a neat one. And then this is, was interesting too, uh, I'm going to butcher this anemometer. What there was an anemometer. Is that a rain meter? I'm going to Google that real quick. Do you guys know? Put it down. I'm not there. sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. An instrument for measuring speed of wind or any current of gas. Speed of wind, wind meter. Okay. Got it. Anemometer. Awesome. Learned what that was. Uh, here's here's a build by Jason. Um, this is another garden enclosure. You guys are going to love this. And it also talks about uh, painting, right? I'm going to go to the, the finished photo. Check that out. That is really beautiful. Uh, and spring is coming in, in here. But it's uh, painted brown. The whole structure is painted brown. Used hardware cloth all the way around with netting. A huge door. And then, you know, seven, eight or so raised beds, uh, plastic raised bed. There's a work in progress a little bit earlier in the season. Nice. There's another. I love the, the river stone. Yeah, I was about to say I really like the layout, the way they have it. Yep. And then the owl. They got the owl looking over the garden just in case... Uh, you know, any birds come through, you know, the perimeter defense, you know, level one, they, then you got the owl scaring them away in there. Uh, but that's really cool. You got the center posts and uh, five ways in there and uh, pretty big undertaking. 90 degrees on the corners, 180s. Looks good. I love those pictures too. I think he mentioned painting on his as well. I could be mistaken. It looked like a, I think he was trying to blend it in with the tree line, he said. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a great idea. There's the mini spill. Let's take a look in the, we were talking hinges. That was a big. And then, um, oh yeah. The enclosure was painted brown to help it blend into the tree line a bit more. Deer netting surrounds the top hardware cloth on the bottom to keep the rodents out. Yeah, I, I think that's going to work. It's been, that's beautiful. Oh, and did you mention the clear, clear tubing pack? Oh, was that, was that this build mm -hmm. by Jason? Oh, right, right in front of me. Yeah, so this was, um, you know, doing these outdoor enclosures, a real common thing is to, uh, instead of driving conduit straight into the ground, which can sometimes mushroom out, um, the another method to consider is putting rebar in the ground pound that and hit that and then um, put conduit over that and that works good but you gotta like the commonly available rebar is a little bit too small so his hack was using this everbuilt which i, I think is home depot 
uh, brand. I think I've seen this at Home Depot. It's a big box store. But to shim in between the, you guys can't see that, sorry. Um, to shim in between the rebar and the inside of the conduit to take up that slack. Really good idea, and you can get this stuff pretty cheap. So, yeah, thanks for mentioning that, Jake. I glossed right over that. Uh, but Jason's build is pretty awesome. I like that. Great job. Harlan mentioned you don't need building permits for temporary structures. Right. That's a big plus. Yeah, I've heard that too. A lot of temporary structures, you know, and I mean, you know, you can take it right down, unscrew it, take it down. Um, hey, Harlan, thanks for that comment. What, what kind of um, temporary structures have you built? Oh, and here we're back to Raymond's, his hinge idea. Thanks, Raymond. Here's another one uh, that Jake shared from Bill, who shared it on email. And I thank you, everyone, for the engagement after that hinge video. Um, we had a lot of people watch it, and then even more ideas came, came out. And um, we've got more videos coming around that topic. We were working on that today. Uh, but this is using an eye hook and then... Let's see, eye hook, and then I'm not sure what you'd call this, a screw-in hook. Maybe somebody's got a better name for it. But uh, these there's two eye hooks mounted straight through conduit that fit the outside diameter of EMT conduit. That I can see a lot of handy things for that. That's cool. I've never even thought about that. And then it also, there it is sideways, it supports it against the T-connector. So you, if you're making a door... A lot of times the hinge designs, you need to support it vertically and then that's how you do it. So really cool idea that Bill shared. It'd be cool to see somebody incorporate, I mean, we can test it out where you have like threaded pipe inserts on two pipes and then you have that in the middle. Mm -hmm. Threaded pipe inserts and then have what in the middle? So like they would be unconnected pipes. They would just have... I don't know if I'm explaining it right. So like they run parallel uh -huh. and then it comes to a point where the conduit is on the very end, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have to try that out. The threaded pipe, pipe inserts have been super helpful. We're finding more uses every day for those things. Bend, so DH Vargas says, bend a piece of rebar 180 degrees on one end and use it as a makeshift anchor. Yeah, okay, so uh, if I'm understanding you, you right, bend it around the EMT and then, okay, so if you've got a, um, like a piece of pipe laying on the ground, bend the rebar in half, a hairpin, and then pound it on either side uh, to hold the pipe down. Yeah, that's a great idea. If I'm understanding, definitely let me know if I, if I got that right. And Harlan was saying a, a mobile chicken tractor would be interesting. Yes, absolutely. And I think I've got, I'm going to try and pull up a, a um, mobile chicken tractor to take a look at. No, nope, that's not the one I'm looking for. Some, let's see. I don't know how I'm going to find this. Which one are you thinking of? Uh, we, I mean, last year we had a lot of people were really into uh, getting into chickens. You mm -hmm. know, there was a lot of interest around there. And we had all types of chicken enclosures. Let me see if I just, no, I'm not sure. Maybe it's in the outdoor section, gardening and agriculture. See if we can, but everybody was thinking about chickens last year, and we had a significant number of people build those. I saw everything from uh, just pick up and move the whole thing uh, to wheels being incorporated into them, and we even we even copied a few chicken tractor designs that people had that were commercial, and then I'd help them, you know, kind of reverse engineer it and use it would make a pipe. 
Yeah, Jake, if you if you see one, definitely let me know. I, sorry, sorry, Harlan. I uh, I don't have it at the ready, but I know there's some in the community. So if you spend a little bit of time, you might be able to find some. Okay, and D.H. Vargas was saying that, that that I did get the gist of that, and that's a that's a great idea. Another one that I, I really like that I'll mention, I keep telling uh, people about, is um, concrete pins. And these are basically three-quarter inch metal rods. So instead of rebar, uh, you can use these. And they're cheap, too. Here's one that's 36 inches long, and they have an outside diameter of three-quarter inch, 0.75, which is really close to EMT. But it's just a, a metal stake that are called rebar pins. I guess you tie rebar. Okay, there's how they're used, pin into a form. But yeah, six dollars um, for one of those. That's not bad. And then um, they come in a, a variety of sizes. The the smallest one, 18 inches. But I've had a lot of luck with this using these inside a conduit holding them into ground. So that's something to check out too. I'm on the hunt for the chicken tractor. Okay, we'll try to find the chicken tractor. Um, but yeah, looks like, uh, let's, let's, let's wrap it up with this one. Uh, I really appreciate everyone's participation. You guys have been great. And I appreciate all the comments. It, it is fun to do this live and then to get your feedback. It makes it a lot more interesting. And we're going to keep doing this every Wednesday. We're going to keep coming on uh, 9 p.m. and uh, seeing who shows up and, and talking DIY with everybody. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in today. Here's one by Paul. Definitely going to want to see this. This is another enclosure. And um, he's trying to protect against deer. You know, it seems deer, squirrels, groundhogs, you know, there's a whole variety of, you got to be on your guard when you, when you have a hard earned garden. Um, but check this out. This is, again, he's got some really cool details. Here's a stainless steel latch that he found on Amazon that looks great uh, and bolts right into the conduit. Conduit, you can surprisingly sink, um, you know, screws into pretty easily, self-tapping screws especially. And then he shows how he mounted it to the frame of his enclosure as well. And there's there's a great look at it. That's really impressive. I mean, he's got the, the bent conduit on the sides. We've seen that before. That looks good. And then the door uh, looks great too. And what he used for a hinge here here it is opening. Cool. Um, included, and this this is something that uh, a few community members have turned us on to. This is a, a hinge that you can find on Amazon, uh, and we review it in our hinge video. Uh, but it's made for PVC pipe. It's got a piano hinge style here, and then they just clip on. They're a little bit big on EMT, but they provide holes to uh, sink some screws in and get right into the conduit. So that's what he used there. And it looks good. Nice build. And that was by Paul uh, that he used um, heavy duty deer mush mesh from Menards. And it all came together with Maker Pipe. Great. Cool. So um, that's, we got through a lot of builds. I hope this was fun for you guys. It was really fun for me. It's great having you in your ch in the chat. Um, thanks for everybody that came by. Uh, really appreciate your comments. And um, before we end, you know, um, definitely, uh, are there any other last comment or questions? Any co questions you guys want me to answer while we're on here? We started this off as a, a Q and A, uh, hoping to get more questions, and I'm sure we will over time. But you know, I was. Uh, I, I appreciate the interaction and want to answer any questions that you guys have. Well, Harlan says, uh, can conduit be riveted? Mm. Wow, that's a great question. I don't think I've ever thought about that. No, I've never heard that or thought about that. 
But Harlan, that's a great idea. That's a good question. Kind of like a, a pop rivet, possibly. Um, you know, we've had customers who have, in more demanding applications, taken the connector, drilled through, and then pinned it in, or run a self-tapping screw. But boy, a pop rivet where you can access it from one side, or I don't know a whole lot about riveting. So um, any rivet specifically, Harlan, that you were thinking about, but I'm sure, uh, you know, it's a mechanical uh, fastener, you know, that just needs two pieces of metal and a hole. Dome research. Yep. We've had, uh, we get a lot of requests for geodesic domes. We'll, we'll keep on doing the research. I see it in our feature. DH Vargas, thanks for that. Well, cool. Yeah, if there's no more questions, thanks everybody for tuning into the live stream. Really appreciate it again. It's fun chatting with you, and I can't wait until we uh, do it again. We're going to do it again Wednesday, again, 9 p.m. coming up next week. And uh, Jake, anything else? Any other final comments? Uh, I'm looking for a chicken tractor. I'm not seeing it. Uh, if I do find something, I'll put it in the description. So if anybody okay. wants to come back and, and see it later. But, but yeah, I'm excited uh, to go live next week. I'll be... I'll be in the hot seat next Wednesday, and I'm looking forward to hanging out. Yeah. Walnuts and Wineberry says, makes me want to up our garden enclosure game. Definitely. I know. I, it probably only takes one intrusion to then, you know, your hard-earned garden uh, to have them up your game. But you guys are looking good, Walnuts and Wineberries. And everybody, uh, Walnuts and Wineberries, I'm going to shout them out real quick because they've been such a great supporter. This is Meg and John Carter and the Carter family. Uh, let's bring up their YouTube channel. They are um, homesteading. Uh-oh. I am wire berries. It's wine berries. Walnuts and wine berries. Um, but yeah, John and Meg are uh, homesteading uh, in, um, in the South, and they moved from a community out to the country. They have a beautiful piece of property um, that they're turning into their, their forever home, and they've got a great channel that uh, they're documenting all of their adventures. Uh, but it's just a beautiful piece of property, and they do everything from um, you know, building a shed to planting a garden to milling. John and Meg have milled all the lumber for their new uh, shed and then everything that goes along with uh, getting their property ready for their forever home. So definitely check out their channel. Uh, they've got a great channel and they post every week. So shout out to them. Thanks for, for joining the chat, yeah, guys, uh, and checking out the live stream. All right. Thanks, everyone. That was a lot of fun. I look forward to next week, Wednesday at 9 p.m. Definitely come back.